This podcast contains explicit content. Hardly focused presents. I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I think the Jack and Jack show. I told myself, Mario, take it easy. Jack. Well, that's just fuck a doodle dandy. Black Zach. Give me some buh, relative. You are listening to the Jack and Jack show. The balance beam. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our podcast. We are the Yak and Jack Show, starring Zach Ward and featuring Chris yeah. Acciardi and Jack Hill. You can go to yakandjack.com. That is A C C and Jack dot com. Uh, Ack, hello. Hello. You sound great. Thank you. That was a very well done intro. Oh, thank you. I'm uh, I, I'm on top of my game, I think. <laughs> and um, I have actually made variants of that intro. Uh, so depending on who's here. So if it's just uh, Ak and I, there's a version of that. If it happens to be a uh, Zach and Jack show, then there's a version of that. So uh, Ak, how was your holiday break? Oh, lovely. Yeah, it was actually, uh, it's an interesting time of year for me now since uh with the new year, my boss of the past seven years has retired. Oh. So uh, I'm now working for the same company just for a different dude. And how is that? Uh, it's well, my last boss was kind of a friggin' psychopath. Like, he, I, I liked him. I actually got along with him really well, even though a lot of other people at the firm didn't. But he was objectively a very strange man. Um, so now I'm working for someone who doesn't call me 20 times a day in a blind panic over something that is not <laughs> important or urgent at all. And it's like weird to get used to. Like I, I didn't get call. I'd got zero phone calls from my boss today. That hasn't happened to me once in seven years. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you were just weird. sitting at your phone, just like shaking it. Just like, when is he going to call? When is he going to call? Are you going to call? Yeah. Call? Like it's just, it's a weird, <laughs> like I want to say it's better, but it's also just very weird. Uh, it's an adjustment period. Th- this effectively means that Ack is, uh, he's like Cameron from uh, Ferris Bueller. He'll keep calling me. He'll keep calling me until I come over. He'll make me feel guilty. This is, uh, this is ridiculous, okay? I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, <laughs> with, I'll go. Shit. <laughs> well, yeah, a few people joke that this guy was going to hire me to go like be his personal assistant at his house after he retires, <laughs> like set up his laptop for him, reprogram his VCR, do all of his TiVoing. Oh, Jesus. Uh, reset reset the was, clocks after daylight savings. He was totally just abusing the fact that he knew that every time that he called that you would pick up the phone. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's a lesson. Don't don't ever answer the phone ever for anything. Yes, yeah. I'm uh, going through a tunnel now and always. <laughs> uh, Zach, uh, it's good to have you here. Yes, good to be back. And how was your holiday break? And, uh, um, it was pretty good. I had a lot of food. Um, got a good amount of presents. Um, had a lot of. Food. It was mostly a lot of food. <laughs> nice. Got a lot of food as presents. Yes. Hey. Exactly. If you're saying that in jest, that's uh, a, th- a thing that I got, and of course it was like mm-hmm. nothing that I'd ever eat, so it's just going to take up space in my cupboard. <laughs> I mean, I could donate yeah, it. Know, I guess. I, I did have one of those. Like, it actually, you know, there's a couple things out of it that um, I think. I definitely will use, but some of it, you know, just not exactly of my palate. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, a lot to get to in this episode of the Yak and Jack show. I, I just want to mention this really quickly. Um, the, the, the French twins that passed away, like within days of each other that, that both had COVID. Did you see this? No. So I feel like you heard about this. You've probably seen these guys before. I believe they're the Bogdanoffs. Uh, oh, okay. I I heard something about that name. Yeah. Yeah. They were like uh, frauds, basically. They were they they had PhDs, but they they met the 
bare minimum requirements to get their PhDs and their mm-hmm. they they posted a bunch of uh articles and medical journals that somehow made it through the peer review process but they were both 72 years old they passed away i think one passed away the, on like the 29th of december the other passed away yesterday the 3rd of january and my word despite them claiming that they didn't have this done they were plastic surgery nightmares oh my god no one should look that ugly <laughs> and oh, no. and they did. They quite literally, and I and I do not mean to disparage the dead here, but they quite literally looked like what I left in my toilet this morning after a nice big cup of coffee. <laughs> They're out of their misery. That that yeah. is that is the the most important take. They weren't va- they both died of COVID. They weren't vaccinated, so I mean, take that as you will. But uh, <laughs> what, what what it was is they passed away of sheer ugliness. Yeah, so um, there's a, a term I like to use for that. Um, it's like after a certain age, you know, you, you kind of start phasing into hellspawn territory. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. You just start becoming a ghost in, in living form. Like like everyone just becomes walking like Emperor Palpatine. It's, it's just, <laughs> it, and you can especially tell the ones, the people that have, you know, definitely lived a life of evil versus the ones who have had, you know, Done, done good things and, you know, just kind of kept to themselves. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it's true, you know, and it's one of those things I'm not proud of myself about, but a lot of old people creep me out. Like, and that's horrible. Old people deserve our respect. They deserve our, us to treat them well, to take care of them. You know, they, they deserve so much. But I look at one and I go, oh, I don't want that. No, no, don't let it touch me. No, <laughs> like it's horrible. I this I am a bad person, but I just really, ah, I, I just ah, you're I don't fine, know, man. You're, yeah. you're, you're fine. You know, what used to scare me when I was little is uh, old people crying, like just yeah, they're already wrinkled to begin with, uh, and they're you know the faces are already. Uh, you know, old people faces right now just imagine them all distorted and even further wrinkled as they're as they're getting ready to start pouting for some reason yeah, yeah. dare i ask what provoked that to become something that you were afraid of uh, people, why were you around so many tearful old people like i can't <laughs> what yeah, were you I can't, doing like, to them <laughs> <laughs> from a young age i enjoyed attending funerals <laughs> uh i don't i i don't know it's it, people have irrational fears uh you know that we know that kid who is afraid of mayonnaise that mm. these are all things that are completely possible so uh, uh yeah theoretically yeah Hard there, to wrap my brain around that one there are people that uh are afraid of needles and uh, decided to try to circumvent that and became a, a billionaire overnight and uh, everything fell apart. <laughs> yeah. So, whoops. Oh, uh, what do you want to what, what do you want to start with? Do we do we continue the discussion of uh quote unquote well in their case quote unquote in in her case not quote unquote. Uh do we want to continue talking about celebrities who have passed or do we want to talk about uh Theranos? I say let's go into Theranos. Okay. Yeah. I think that was a good segue. Awesome. I wanna I wanna capitalize on it. Cool. We had two opportunity two like two different segues that could have happened. Uh <laughs> so unfortunately what was that? Two, uh, because like this is gonna be uh, fresh for me because I actually don't know anything about this. Well, hey, I am glad you brought that up. I have some audio here from uh about six years ago. From uh, CBS, uh, what used to be called CBS this morning, um, a piece on Elizabeth Holmes, who was the founder of Theranos. Uh, Elizabeth Holmes, who I, I honestly, I didn't know who she was until yesterday when the news broke of her sentencing. But she's she's a big she's a fraud. She's a phony. She's a fake. <laughs> and uh, she's going to jail. So, um okay. And I, I just want to preface this. She not she not bad on the eyes. If if you like crazy bitches. Ah, uh, one of those. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. She she's not honestly she's not too bad on the eyes. But it's one of those cases where it's like you you see the list of felonies she's just been convicted of and go, wow, she's only thirty seven. 
I'm 32 and I haven't convic- committed any felonies. And I'm like, I'm a failure. I this honestly I get on it. This honestly might be a, a, a product of you know being in court, being a convicted felon. But that is a hard 37 <laughs> compared to the like the the interviews and, and things I was watching uh, with her. Um, like I said, this this thing I'm about to play is about six years old. Uh, she she aged hard in six years. Yeah, the judicial process probably does that to you. Allison Mack from uh, Smallville, the 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 sex torture dungeon lady. Um, oh yeah, she, same deal, man. You look at her uh, uh, just a few years ago. She she carried that girl next door look right up until she got busted, and then you see her now, and like you think she aged twenty years in the course of five. Um, yeah, was she the one with that? Cult NXCVMI or whatever it's called. Correct. It's uh, it's pronounced Nexium. Nexium. Okay. Yeah. I I only ever see it written down, so I just sort of, I just I'm I'm reading through it. You know, so and so who is connected with the cult. Yeah. You know, I just I just blur past it without trying to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She was naming uh, Grimes and Elon Musk's kid before they did. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, for Ze- well, first of all, this so so like I said, this not bad on the eye. She was not bad in the eye, or is was however you want to look at it for a crazy bitch, not bad on the eyes until you hear her voice. Here we go. Whenever there is a quote unquote glass ceiling, there is an iron woman right behind it. That's not a man. That's Elizabeth Holmes. Hmm. <laughs> Like the, the, you would not put that voice to her. Yeah. Um. So here he goes, Zach. Uh, an ex- explanation from CBS this morning from six years ago about Theranos and what they were doing. What Holmes is doing is running Theranos, the biotech company she founded in 2003. Healthcare is the leading cause of bankruptcy. You'll see her either in a black turtleneck or a white lab coat, taking a high-tech approach to blood testing. Instead of a needle to the arm, it's a pinprick to the finger. Holmes is marketing Theranos as a faster and cheaper alternative to a process that hasn't meaningfully changed in decades. So how does it work? First, we've created these little tiny tubes, which we call the nanotainers which are designed to replace the big traditional tubes Mm -hmm. that come from your arm and instead allow for all the testing to be done from a tiny drop from a finger. And yeah, it it was all about like revolutionizing how uh, blood tests were to be done. Uh, Considering I've never heard of that process or ever even seen anything like that, that definitely went well. (laughs) The nanotators. Yeah. They, yeah, I was I I held that in. I heard that too. Well, the machines that were supposed to like do the heavy lifting were called like the Edison devices or something like that. And, and it was named after uh, an Edison quote about like, I've never failed. I've just had 10,000 things not work or something like that, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> uh, which, which I guess was uh, foreshadowing if you look at it that way someone on reddit um explained the whole scenario perfectly in in a perfect tldr form they'd said the book bad blood goes into greater detail but the theranos machines were giving results that theranos knew were likely incorrect and reporting them anyway for certain tests other tests were outsourced to other machines, but a few were run on the Theranos machines and produced bad results. The journalist who exposed Theranos managed to get multiple incorrect results from the same test ran on Theranos machines. So basically, mm-hmm. basically, their device is complete bullshit, never worked from the start, and any results that they did have were coming from uh, you know, another company that was actually doing it correctly. Uh, and also doing it uh, using the traditional method of uh, blood testing, and I think taking the same amount, too. It's the standard tube that you you see they they fill when you give blood, um, or if you have blood taken from you. Uh, the nanotube taken before it's time. No, yeah. so, uh, but she's been sentenced, I think, to at least twenty years in prison. I think there was like 
seven yeah, or eight. Each, each of the four counts she was found guilty on has a maximum sentence of 20 years, um, but they're likely to be served concurrently. So uh, it will be up to 20 years. She hasn't actually received her sentencing yet. Okay. Um, she's just, she's been found guilty of four of the seven charges she was charged with. Sentencing will come sometime soon. Did they mention anything about parole? I have no idea. No. Okay. <laughs> or if she gets like, you know, she's only there for three years and then does like, you know, house arrest or does <laughs> community service. Or mm-hmm. oh, Martha Stewart. Yeah, it might not yeah. be. <laughs> Yeah, the New York Times article I was reading pointed out this is the first high-profile woman to be convicted of fraud charges since Martha Stewart in 2004. (laughs) So, hashtag feminism. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yes. There we go. That's the equality that everyone wants. (laughs) (laughs) And more than half the age, too. I think Martha Stewart was in her 60s at that point when, when that all went down. Um. Yeah, uh, timeline. Uh, at uh, a very odd one. <laughs> at one point, Elizabeth Holmes, her net worth was valued at, I believe, four point five billion dollars. And when everything with Theranos imploded, she is worth zilch zero. Yeah, because yeah. she had no. Though I think her the stocks that she had in her own company weren't like. And I am to- I'm a total moron when it comes to this. I don't take anything I'm, I'm citing here as gospel. She had basically like common stock in her own company. And, and investors typically get, I think it's like preferred stock or something like that. So he's like, mm-hmm. if I understand, and I'm again, I'm probably misunderstanding this. If the company were to go belly up, the preferred stockholders don't get screwed. Because she had common stock, she got screwed and she got literally nothing out of it. Yeah. So, womp womp. Uh, I mean, well, nothing out of it. I mean, she got a jail sentence out of it. So, <laughs> yeah, free room and board. Yep. So, um, hey, she'll do fine. And uh, I think she'll do fine in prison, though, with that, uh, with that deep baritone. <laughs> she'll be the anchor of the jail choir. I guess I don't know if there's a film about this, but I guess Jennifer Lawrence portrays her. Or is portraying her? I didn't. I don't know. Oh, hmm. I don't. Huh. Wait, actually, fat. yeah, because I know there were a couple more twists and turns over the years. Like one note was, uh, she ran Theranos with a partner of hers. Um, I don't know if you happen to have the article open, Jack. I'm not even going to try to remember his name. No, um, his, his go by his nickname, Sunny. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> So she originally tried to say he was the mastermind behind all the fraud and she was basically uh, trapped in an abusive relationship with him. But uh, over over the course of the trial, uh, the prosecution pulled that apart and found it to be not an accurate depiction of events. You mean she's not telling the truth? (laughs) Surely you jest. Uh, The the film is uh, called Bad Blood and... uh, I believe it's in development, but it will feature okay. uh, Jennifer Lawrence as Elizabeth Holmes. Would be funny if like the movie were going to end with her getting away with it and then like, shit, now I have to do rewrites. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the old Betty White. That was terrible. I'm sorry. You know, for all the like, like all the scares through all the years of just like not even just from her, just from just the meme culture. Um, it kind of just hit like, oh, wait, really? Oh, oh, yeah. I only believed it because I got the news from three sources at the exact same time. Uh, I was playing Warcraft and I saw someone post in trade chat, Betty White has just died. And that's the kind of thing that people say in MMO trade chats every day. <laughs> so I just saw it and sort of rolled my eyes. Then I saw someone post on a Discord server I'm in, in all caps, oh my fucking God, Betty White just died. And then like one half a minute later, I get a message on Facebook from Jack yep. saying, uh, guys, it happened, Betty White is dead. And, and then I was like, okay, well, if, if three people have all just told me this within the same 45-second period, 
the, new, the news just broke somewhere big. Right. <laughs> like, well, at, at the time, it was um, it was TMZ. And TMZ, you can usually trust for these sorts of things. And mm-hmm. um, I, I, I was like, hey, I saw it. I'm going to take it. I'm going to run with it. And I, I will eat my own shoe if it ends up being another hoax. Because it was too good to be true, man. It was New Year's Eve. And yeah, uh, only, you know, two and a half weeks away from our hundredth birthday, Betty White. And uh, of course, <laughs> my first thought is like complete denial. It's like the I guess there was I don't know. Like, what is it? The seven stages of grief. Uh, in this case with Betty White, it's the two stages. There's the denial stage and then the what a bitch stage. <laughs> How could she leave us like this? <laughs> Literally the <laughs> hours Hours left of 2021 and two weeks away from her 100th birthday, which is being publicized everywhere with a, with a film coming out about it. Like mm-hmm. we, we were we were counting our chickens well before oh, they that's hatched. That's what the billboards are for. So I was just about to mention, I've been seeing billboards lately. I guess I just haven't noticed them before. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was a big to do. They, they had this whole celebration, this whole thing. And it's still happening. A film is still coming out, but it was going to be. Uh, in theaters on her birthday and uh, in a couple of weeks and people magazine at like three days before she died, ran an article about her turning a hundred years old and how like she's been in great health. And uh, yeah, that's what uh, Stephanie pointed out right away was she was like, I just read an article like three days ago that had an interview with her saying she feels fantastic. Right. So, I mean, I guess it could just be that, Every day at age 99 that you wake up alive is pretty fantastic, all things considered. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it just oh, seemed like again. Yeah, weirdly, weirdly soon. You know, it, like it feels weird to say a 99 year old was taken too soon, but I mean, this I said what it felt like. I was saying the same thing about uh, Kirk Douglas, and that guy was like 112. Mm-hmm. Like far too soon, well, far too soon. Thing- the thing with, with Betty White is that she was pretty much everybody's grandma and also aunt and also mom. Yep. Yeah. And like all in one. So like that's kind of why it's just kind of, and again, because of the meme culture of it being like, wait, no, really? Oh, oh, it's just I feel like it was just very blunted. So like it's hard like I feel sad, but also I'm just kinda like Oh, I feel like this ruined me. I feel like I can't actually react to this because I'm just like, oh, it doesn't feel real. Yeah. It yeah. It is weird. Yeah. No, it's coming, but it still sucks. Uh, it's, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm mentally preparing. I've been mentally prepared for about 10 or 15 years now for William Daniels to pass on uh, Mr. Feeney. Um, <laughs> Cause he's up there. Oh, wow. He, yeah. He's in his nineties. I mean, he's still alive. He's still, uh, he's still active, but um, you know, it's, it's inevitable. Uh, and it's going to suck no matter what. Um, even well, just, even just being in his presence at, at Boston comic con a few years ago and just like, uh, I, I didn't even want to breathe around him cause I was afraid that might cause him to <laughs> keel over and die. Well, <laughs> you gave him the big one. Jack, if it'll give you any solace, um, at the very least we can, um, w- when they do pass, we can be happy if, they don't actually pass like David Carradine. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine ninety-four-year-old William Daniels auto erotic? <laughs> <laughs> I would just be impressed. I would say, you know, good for him keeping up with his hobbies all the way into old age. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's twenty twenty-two now, so it's like, yeah, I, I guess that we can have these conversations out in public now too. And he still had to take Viagra ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah you know you say like you know ah, oh, god damn it the final hours of 2021 and she couldn't hold out but i like the idea again put forward by stephanie that you know imagine how pissed off we'd be imagine what a bad taste we'd have in our mouth for the year of 2022 if on the first day of it or even just very early on betty white died the overwhelming reaction would be 2022 is ruined yeah. Not th- this whole oh, year yeah. is shot. This is a bad year from day one because of Betty Betty Wet die- 
uh, Betty White dying. Yeah. Um, but because like she was like, you know what? I'm taking 2021 out with me. And uh, the curse stayed in the last year. And now we get a fresh, bright new slate for this year. Yeah. Crystal Pepsi's coming back, man. We're already off to a great start. Never mind this. Never mind this, uh, you know, Omicron surge. Um, (laughs) but, uh, yeah. So what, what I was ruined by and, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy that TMZ did not phrase and frame their headline the same way that this one was. There was a, uh, you know, like a intentional hoax satire article from about six or seven years ago titled uh, Betty White 92 dies peacefully in her home. And it was about her uh, dying clothes. Oh, yeah. D-Y-E-S. But of course, uh, you know, simpletons out there who failed basic spelling in elementary school would fall for it. Mm-hmm. Not knowing the difference between you know, uh, dying is uh, colors and then, you know, death. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy that TMZ did not frame it as Betty White 99 dies peacefully in her home. Cause I'm like, not this again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so cause of death, she was fucking 99 years old. Like that was it. She, she was still working. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she, like, she, she needed to rest. She literally, she went to sleep. She she lied down. She went to sleep. She didn't wake up. Yeah. Wow. Uh, now it was confirmed. I wouldn't be surprised if she might have been in a, in a, in a state of delirium because she. I, it's been reported her last words were her last word was Alan, which was her late husband who passed away uh, forty years ago. Hmm. Um. Who? Uh, she. She. One of her. One of her. I guess like. Famous quotes from later in life, James Lipton, the late James Lipton asked her uh, on uh, inside the actor studio if, uh, you know, when you pass, if you, you know, believe in heaven, when you get to heaven, what would you want God to say to you? And she said, uh, welcome. Here's Alan. So, so hopefully, uh, you know, if yeah. you if you believe in that, then hopefully they are reunited somewhere. But um it, other, you know, besides that, besides her reportedly saying that she passed away peacefully, uh, she did not pass away due to complications from the booster that she did not actually receive three days prior to her death. <laughs> if you're reading that and you believe it, please step in front of a moving vehicle. Yeah, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta uh, be kidding. Me. This is um, this is why I'm glad I don't actually focus on any news channels. I just like skim news articles because like that would be just. Oh, well, I saw oh, that hurts my brain. So page six had to like post an article like, uh, you know, clarifying this Betty White's cause of death revealed agent denies she got booster day before this article also mentioning her last word being Alan. Um, her agent, Jeff Weishas says, and I'm probably butchering that last name. Quote, people are saying her death was related to getting a booster shot three days earlier, but that is not true. She died of natural causes. Her death should not be politicized. That is not the life she lived. Um, yeah, and I mean, even if she did get the booster shot three days beforehand, she probably also took a piss three days beforehand or, you know, washed her hands at some point. Like, right. I, 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 yeah, it's just insane to be like, oh, she did this thing before she died. Therefore, that must be what killed her. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's not how anything works. <laughs> so, yeah, well, it sucks that we have now finally uh, entered a world without Betty White. Um, but she it was a, it was a life well lived. Uh, NBC, God love him, playing replaying her episode from 2010 when she hosted just absolute mm-hmm. brilliance um it's one of those it's one of those things and i and i find myself saying this a lot uh about different things but we truly did not deserve betty white yeah i mean look at the bright side golden girls reunion yeah oh man i was at cunty's i'm sorry cole's uh the <laughs> <laughs> thank you zach um i i was there the the day before and I have, I think I might still have it. I just, I'm too fat for it now. Uh, 
a it's a it's a yellow shirt that says stay golden and it's got the golden girls on it and uh mm-hmm. they they had them in stock and i considered buying a, a new one that would match nice. my girth and i'm like nah i don't need to man i should have yeah i mean if i did i'd probably be thinking to myself well oh, i killed betty white because i bought the shirt right but at the same time i would have uh you know I'd, I'd be wearing that shirt daily to uh you know immortalize her mm-hmm. but uh, worth it and can confirm i checked in on stefan too. make sure <laughs> he didn't hang himself <laughs> when he found out <laughs> about that it seemed there was there was a period of time where when when we were losing the cast of the golden girls it always happened to be like before some big like event that uh, our group was undertaking like taking a vacation or something yeah we were about to embark on a great adventure and then would get the news of something tra- usually it would be jack bursting in to deliver the news <laughs> <laughs> the best person to deliver it well, knowing it would ruin Stefan's day too, I, I would take enjoyment in it. Now, now, now that we're older, I don't take enjoyment in this. But back in the day, I'm like, <laughs> now that I realize I'm also mortal, I no longer find it funny when people die. <laughs> yeah, now I just keep it to myself. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's it's it makes for a good laugh to say, hey, did someone check in on Stefan and make sure he's okay? Uh, Stefan did when I texted Stefan too. He he went. Um, he's like, I was waiting for you to text me. Yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's uh, like I said, it's gonna suck to not not uh, have her around anymore. But ninety nine years, man. Um, and yeah, it's hard to feel bad about a ninety nine year run, right? And especially with everything that is going wrong in the world right now, to go out in your sleep peacefully with literally no ailments and being still sharp as a tack, mm-hmm. we should all be so lucky. Yeah, I mean that's the way to do it—to be feeling great during the day and then just suddenly and with no warning die in your sleep yeah that is the ideal death i would love to go that way yeah um uh or how carrie fisher put it um was it drowning in the ocean strangled by my own bra yeah (laughs) (laughs) because i wear a bra you see so yes um we only got a couple minutes left here but um Quickly, uh, the, the something about some chick selling her farts. <laughs> I didn't even actually read that article. I just thought the headline was insane. <laughs> if we just left it at that. That would be epic. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, she. I, I mean, I guess there's a market for it. You know, I, I knew about. Yeah, there definitely is. I knew about the used panty vending machines. I knew about uh, the gamer girl bathwater. Yeah, Belle, Delphine. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know that people sold their own bottled farts. That is new information that I learned going into 2022. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know that that was actually something that people would uh, think to just see if it actually works. Well, yeah. and then sell it. Well, uh, according to New York Post, the New York Post, 90 Day Fiance star retires from selling farts after heart attack sca- uh, scare. Now, I think I forget what they call this in journalism. It's it's like the hook. It's like the the first. Oh, be- burying the lead. Well, that's yeah. <laughs> the, the, the thing is like it's the first sentence or the first paragraph. It's supposed to grab your attention. So you'll read the whole article. And this is a this is mm-hmm. what they should be teaching in in journalism classes. Yeah. Single sentence from New York Post. She had a fart attack. Man, who? Okay. Uh, Yaron. Get that man a Pulitzer. Yeah. Yaron Steinbuck. Wow. He was having fun with this. A reality TV star who launched a gassy venture peddling her fan- fancy flatulence to strangers. Stephanie Matto, 31, blew people away on social media when she, re- when she recently announced that she makes more than 50 grand a week selling her farts. Oh. Mm. Uh. Now, is that, yeah, no, no, is that yes. high markup or just sheer bulk production? <laughs> That's what I want to know. When you make fifty thousand dollars a week selling your farts, is that two farts to very rich collectors, or is that like five hundred farts to to Act. more more average people? I gotta know. 
Zach, let me tell you, there are some questions that you will definitely be able to find the answer to that you do not want to find the answer to. Don't <laughs> answer that question. Don't answer any of those questions. Listen, listen, listen. If I may quote myself, I find enjoyment in the smell of my own flatulence after I eat beans. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think this is? Is this a Theranos situation? Is she committing fraud by purchasing her own farts and writing it off on her tax returns? I mean, only if she's trying to overinflate a black market with her bottled farts. Yeah, that's uh, got to be. I, it. He said overinflate. <laughs> <laughs> this, this conspiracy goes deep, man. This goes all the way to the top, or should I say, the bottom? <laughs> We're through the looking glass, people. <laughs> all right um well uh as sure as it is um that that will uh do it for this installment of the yak and jack show i do want to end uh with something uh that is uh near and dear to me the band gin blossoms released uh, about uh, it'd be about four or five years four years ago now uh their latest album is called mixed reality the single from it was called break and they recently released a remix of the song and i wanted to feature a brief clip of it for you right here <laughs> I'm going to give you 55 straight. You must have been so happy when you found a song with that line in it. <laughs> I was listening to this earlier, and it just it clicked in my head. I'm like, holy crap. I'm, ha I'm having a Michelangelo moment here. <laughs> this will be my magnum opus. It is. I, 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 I retire. There will be nothing <laughs> that tops this. They told me I was crazy. <laughs> they told me it couldn't be done. All right. Uh, Ak, thank you for being here. Thank you for helping me kick off the uh, first uh, podcast of 2022. Happy to be here. And Zach, likewise, always happy to have you here. Uh, happy to have you yeah, part of it. Yes. Um, for the rest of you, we will talk at you next time. See you. Bye. Goodbye. FSN, I'm Daniel Wrenches.